Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Sayyida Ramda Saidi from 4 p.m. morning. My role number is BP1650229 and group number is 55. Today in my presentation, I will be discussing about aura migraine. Let's start with the overview of aura migraine. Migraine is a medical condition that involves severe recurring headaches and other symptoms. These recurrent episodes of headaches are most often unilateral and in some cases associated with visual or sensory symptoms. These visual or sensory symptoms collectively called as aura. Now the question arises that what is aura? Aura is the term for any of the sensory changes that happen before a migraine headache. Basically, aura is the warning sign of migraine. They can affect your vision, hearing, or ability to speak. You could also have muscle weakness or tingling. A migraine episode is different from a headache. An episode usually occurs in stages and can last for several days. It can affect a person's daily life, including their ability to work or study. There are three types of aura, visual aura, sensory aura, and the motor aura. Migraine aura may precede or accompany the headache phase or may occur in isolation. Visual aura are most common, but can be sensory, motor, or any combination of these. Visual aura include flashing of lights, zigzagging lines, blurred vision, blind spots that expand over time. Sensory aura include numbness or tingling. Motor auras include slurred or jumbled speech, difficulty in understanding what others say, difficulty in writing, and problems in thinking clearly. Visual symptoms may be positive or negative. The common positive visual phenomena is a scintillating scotoma, an arc or band of absent vision with a shimmering or glittering zigzag border. Aura can happen in four types of migraine. Number one, migraine with aura, with or without a headache. This is also called as classic migraine. Number two, migraine with brainstem aura. This is when the aura starts in the base of your brain or both sides of your brain. Third is the hemiplegic migraine. In this rare type, aura causes weakness on one side of your body. Fourth is a retinal migraine. You have vision changes in one eye before the migraine begins. Now let's discuss about the timeline of a migraine. The migraine occurs in four phases, premonitory phase, aura phase, headache, and the last stage of the migraine is called as hangover. Let's discuss each of these phases one by one. Premonitory phase. About 60% of people who experience migraines with aura report premonitory symptoms that occur hours to days before the headache onset. These symptoms include irritability, depression, muddled thought, fatigue, yawning, increased urination, and muscle stiffness. Aura, as we have clearly and deeply discussed earlier, that usually occurs within an hour before the head pain begins and generally lasts less than 60 minutes. Sometimes migraine aura occurs with little or no headache, especially in people with age 50 or older. These symptoms include the visual disturbances, numbness, tingling, ringing in ears. Now the third stage is the headache. As we can clearly see that the pain intensity is highest during this phase of the migraine. A migraine can cause severe thrombing pain or pulsing sensation, usually on one side of head. It can last for hours to days. Headache may be associated with a number of symptoms, which include pain, nausea, vomiting, neck pain, anxiety, sensitivity to light, sound, smell, insomnia, and congestion. The third and the final stage of the migraine is the migraine hangover, which is also called as post-drone. 
It can linger a few hours to more than a day after the headache goes away. Experts believe that they happen up to 80% of the time. And these symptoms include confusion, fatigue, lack of concentration, depressed mood, and euphoria. Now, if the patient is suffering from migraine with aura, how we can detect it? How we can make the diagnosis? The diagnosis of migraine is based on patient's history. According to diagnostic criteria established by the International Headache Society, patients must have had at least five headache attacks that lasted four to 72 hours. The headache must have had at least two of the following symptoms or conditions, unilateral location, pulsating quality, moderate or severe pain intensity, causing avoidance of routine physical activity. In addition, during the headache phase, the patient must have had at least one of these symptoms, which include nausea and or vomiting, photophobia and phonophobia. Now here we have a case study related to migraine with aura. KL, a 29 years old woman, presents to the clinic with a five month history of left-sided pulsatile head pain recurring on a weekly basis. Her headaches are usually preceded by unformed flashes of light bilaterally and a sensation of light headedness. The ensuing pain is always unilateral and is commonly associated with nausea, vomiting, and photophobia. The headache is not relieved by two tablets of either aspirin, 325 milligram, or ibuprofen, 200 milligram, and generally lasts all day unless she is able to lie in a dark room and sleep. The headache usually interferes with her ability to continue work. KL is unable to identify any external factors that precipitate a migraine attack. Both KL's mother and grandmother also were affected by migraine headaches. Medical history is unremarkable and KL denies any other medical problems. Current medications include only the OTC analgesics for headache and the contraceptive orthonovum. Journal physical and neurological examinations are within normal limits. Now, what would be an appropriate drug of first choice for the treatment of KL's acute headache? For a case study, I have prepared the SOAP NORS. SOAP NORS have four components, and the SOAP stands for Subjective, Objective, Assessment, and Plan. First component, let us discuss about the subjective. Age is 29 years old. Gender is female. Chief complaint is left sided pulsatile head pain recurring on a weekly basis. Onset, five months history. Symptoms associated unformed flashes of light bilaterally, sensation of light headedness, nausea, vomiting, and photophobia. Family history both KL's mother and grandmother were affected by migraine headaches. Second component of soap nurse, which is objective. Journal physical examinations and neurological examinations are within the normal limits. Now, the third component of the SOAP node is assessment. The typical age of onset of migraine headaches is 15 to 35 years. Migraine headaches occur more frequently among first degree relatives, suggesting a genetic basis for this disorder. In the assessment of migraine, now what will we have to consider? the site or location of pain, quality of pain, duration of the pain, and the conditions that provoke the pain. So in this lady, the quality of the pain that is interferes with KL's ability to continue work, the duration of the pain that is usually last all day in the case of KL, and the conditions that palliate the pain, that is lie in a dark room and sleep are all compatible with the signs of migraine with aura. This means that our patient is suffering from migraine with aura, which is a benign and though often disabling disorder. Now, what will be our plan for the treatment of this complication in our patient? The general approach for treatment of acute migraine with aura include the four classes of drug, 5-H2 receptor agonist, analgesics, sedatives, and anti-emetic drugs. 
For this patient, we have to give sumatriptan, 50 milligram orally, Q8 ID, acetaminophen, 1000 milligram orally, Q6 ID, butobarbital, 30 milligram orally, Q8 ID, metoclopramide, 10 milligram orally, Q6 ID. The patient should be concealed about the relaxation techniques which help to reduce the number of migraines. Patients also should be advised to develop a sleeping and eating routine and drink plenty of fluids. As we have read in the case study that the patient is also consuming oral contraceptives which may precipitate migraine attacks in women and is likely related to the estrogen content. Migraine with aura is an independent risk factor for strokes in women younger than 45 years of age. So KL should also be concealed about her increased risk for a stroke and the options for alternative birth control methods should also be told to KL. The additional notes are that although her headaches are frequently associated with nausea and vomiting, it's not clear whether these symptoms occur soon after the onset of the attack or whether they evolve gradually as the migraine progresses. If vomiting occurs early, a non-oral route of administration should be considered. Subcutaneous or intranasal sumatriptan are appropriate drug therapy options. If KL's migraines evolve gradually after the onset of her oral symptoms, then an oral triptan may provide sufficiently rapid relief. Thank you for watching.